Good evening, I'm David Aiken. Thank you for watching. Nova Scotia politicians, of course, have been gearing up all summer for an election expected to officially begin any day now. Well, their federal allies are also starting to get in the game, and one of the most popular federal politicians in Nova Scotia is the current federal justice minister, Peter McKay, joining us now from Halifax. And Minister, thanks for your time. I want to start four years ago when Nova Scotians, who had always picked a liberal or a progressive conservative for premier, did something they'd never done before. They went for the NDP. How on earth did that happen? Well, it's a product of what often happens in politics when a government or a party have been in power for a long time and people are looking for alternatives and there's a sense of um, a tide that begins and, and follows through very often. That's what happened. There was an orange wave that swept over Nova Scotia. And to be completely frank about it, my assessment being a Nova Scotian was that Daryl Dexter had a very down-home appealing and uh, personal approach that people were quite taken with and, and leaders um, are very central to a change when it occurs. Let, let's talk about Nova Scotia politics for a bit. You know, it, it's, it's been my sense that parties are less ideologically driven in, in your province. Perhaps voters respond more to individuals. I think of your neck of the woods where the McKay family has long dominated federal politics. It's been Elmer, then a guy named Peter. I know in the riding of Anna Ganesh, a progressive conservatives named McIsaac, Gerald and his dad have long dominated. Uh, let me get your sense of how you think Nova Scotia politics is unique in this country. Well, I think that that's a fairly good assessment. I mean, going back to the days of Robert Stanfield, which I can just barely remember, um, he was a very hands-on, uh, down-home, appealing, soft-spoken figure, um, somebody who was quite cerebral, very, uh, very good at uh, getting to the root of the problem and, and offering practical, constructive solutions. Uh, I think people watch politics very closely in my province. Uh, people recognize that government matters. It matters at, at every level. It touches everything we do. Um, and so politics here is personal. People attach themselves in a very real way to their party, to their local representative, uh, and to the policies that matter to them. And, and it does sometimes cross, uh, you know, the traditional um, partisan world. Uh, you know, when you meet somebody in your community, um, they don't sort of immediately identify themselves or associate themselves with one party. On some occasions, it's the issue that matters to them. And what are you going to do about it? How are you going to deliver the solution for them and their family? Now, we, we talked the other night to the newly nominated liberal candidate in the provincial riding of Anna Ganesh. Uh, his name, of course, Randy DeLore, uh, CNFX professor. And Anna Ganesh, of course, is part of your federal riding. So you're certainly very popular, very well known up in that part of the world. And he knows that you're going to lend your star power to the PC candidates there uh, and throughout Nova Scotia. But Randy also knows he might be able to count on a federal star on the liberal side a guy named Justin Trudeau. In fact, we've already seen Trudeau campaign a bit with provincial liberal leader Stephen McNeil. So are you ready to cross swords with Justin Trudeau in battleground Nova Scotia? Well, look, I was asked that question uh, just a few days ago by Sun Media. And, uh, you know, the short answer is yes, of course, we're going to assist uh, and campaign with local candidates. In Nova Scotia, uh, my expression is there's one shade of blue. Uh, if you're a conservative or a progressive conservative, you work together. Many of our riding associations, quite frankly, are the same people. They are the same teams that come out on federal and provincial election campaigns. I know Darren Thompson, the uh, Antigonish candidate, just as I know um, most of the candidates, in fact, not only in my riding, but across the country, because you come together at annual meetings, you come together uh, at various times throughout the year, not just at election time, and it becomes a bit like a family. Um, and I grew up in the Conservative Party. You mentioned my dad, uh, my grandfather. Uh, people who I was around were like-minded and, uh, and conservative in, in their outlook. Jamie Bailey, the leader of the Progressive Conservative Party here, um, very much uh, deep roots in the party, worked for Premier John Hamm, uh, like Scott Armstrong, like John McDonnell, my former Chief of Staff and President of the party. Uh, these are individuals, uh, men and women, that I've known in the party virtually my whole life. So it does become common cause when elections occur. And uh, yes, you can expect that I'll be on the campaign trail and contributing when and where I can 
uh, I have to balance that with my own federal responsibilities and family responsibilities. Well, finally, then, let me ask you about Premier Dexter, because it's my sense he is not a lot. He's, he's, not, lot, he's not a lot like a lot of other NDP leaders. Uh, he is going to the people in this election saying, look at me, I'm an NDP leader and I've balanced the budget. I've got a plan to cut taxes. So I want to get your assessment then of how uh, Daryl Dexter's NDP is different from the Thomas Mulcair NDP that you sit across from every day in the House of Commons. Well, I think, generally speaking, uh, socialist-leaning parties tend to advocate for bigger government and higher taxes, and that has certainly been the case here in Nova Scotia under uh, Daryl Dexter. Um, you know, I'm not going to speak personally against uh, the Premier. He, he is very folksy, approachable, and, and hardworking. I've seen him around the province. But his policies, frankly, have been disastrous for Nova Scotia. Uh, we have seen now the highest taxes in Nova Scotia. Rural Nova Scotia is facing even higher levels of out-migration and challenges in their services. We have uh, ambiguity on some of the big projects, uh, particularly the energy projects and potential that we know exists here in Atlantic Canada. And while he's been supportive of shipbuilding, he's quite frankly uh, misstated the Nova Scotia provincial government's uh, involvement and, and overstated uh, the claims that somehow uh, the provincial government had anything to do with a 25 billion dollar shipbuilding project here in our province that was won by the shipbuilders and the company uh, Irving of this province. So to that extent Nova Scotians I think will be informed um, in their judgment of, of his administration. He has a record that he has to defend. Uh, Jamie Bailey on the other hand um, I think and I suspect will be focusing very much on the economy. Uh, he's somebody with a lot of experience in accounting, he's somebody who has run a business, comes from the private sector in addition to his political experience and I think we'll be offering uh, a very good alternative and, and you know I'm, I'm not shying saying that uh, I would be very happy uh, to work with Jamie Bailey as Premier of Nova Scotia. Justice Minister Peter McKay from the Federal Riding of Central Nova, thank you so much for your time today. Sure, thanks very much David.